and the button has been pressed. <laughs> this is going to be the first time I've done this outside, so we'll see how this goes. Hello, beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto. I just released a motorcycle camp cookbook. We're going to have a super chill little cook with me today. Audio may be weird because we're in my backyard today, so there will be normal neighborhood sounds in the background. I can't help it. I hope that you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you can hear me. <laughs> Yay! Hello! And thank you so much, Andy, for the super chat and for backing the Indiegogo campaign. Thank you so, so much. Y'all over, are over here for me, so excuse me if I look at the laptop every once in a while. Um, the really, really big news is that this morning when I launched the campaign, we hit my first funding goal in two hours. And that's so crazy. And I can't, I have no words for my gratitude for all of you and all of your support. And the incredible amount of response to this book has just been amazing. I have no words. So thank you. Oh, good. Audio is great. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so happy you guys are here. Thank you so much for coming to chill and cook with me. I'm going to make some um, tomato orzo with some asparagus today. It's one of my simple go-tos. I eat this so much. So I'm excited to just like chit chat and cook food with you. <laughs> I'm going to dump the link to the Indiegogo campaign in the chat for those who haven't seen it yet. Um, isn't weird normal? Yes, it's facts. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> Hi, Moto Scout. Hello, Darth. Misty. Hello, Eric. Hi, Sly Dog. Cheryl's here. Thank you so much. And Sandy is here. Hello. I don't have a motorcycle yet, but I can still use it when I go exploring in my Bronco. It's facts. Actually, one of my testers, Chris, um, tested most of the recipes at home on her home stove and she's my <laughs> she's my little go-to for um, all the things because I'm pretty sure Chris has tested 90% of the recipes in the book at this point. I think the only other person who's tested more of those recipes is me and I wrote it so that makes sense doesn't it? Um, anyway she says that it's a fantastic after work cookbook even just at home because everything comes together in under an hour. Most everything comes together in under 40 minutes so <sighs> Yee! Oh, I'm all giddy. <laughs> Hi from the UK. Hello, Fred. Yes, thank you, Darth. Hello, Meredith. Greetings from Ireland. Oh, this is awesome. Okay, I should probably get to the cooking thing because um, that's in front of me. I have some lovely organic tomatoes from right here in Oregon. Um, I love spring when all of the seasonal produce starts hitting the shelves. It's like my favorite. I'm going to do like a handful of these. Um, I'm just making a single serving for myself. So a eh, handful. Also, my little cheat at camp is that I tend to eyeball all of my serving proportions. Um, making actual measurements for the cookbook was a process because most of the time I'm just like, oh, you know, like two of my own, like, I just kind of like do like two big handfuls or whatever. Um, <laughs> and that's not really translatable to other people. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, we're gonna chop up some cherry tomatoes. I've already got olive oil in the skillet. So we'll just start doing that. Um, also, look at this knife, you guys. The new Sea to Summit stuff is so nice. The these are the new knives and they're stainless, they're stainless steel all the way through and the handle is so nice and weighty. It feels so good. Anyway, nerd stuff aside. <laughs> I'm going to start doing this. Hi, hello, hello Richard. Hi, oh man. Hello, I'm looking forward to trying recipes. Excellent. Hello Tion. Thank you guys so much for showing up and chilling with me. Hopefully, once I start the stove, the audio doesn't go insane. <laughs> I have been 
awake for an obscene amount of time for me. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I am not a morning person. Um, I went to bed at 2 a.m. last night, my time. And then I got up at 6 a.m. because you have to manually push the button to launch um, Indiegogo campaigns. So I slept for about four hours. And then I woke up and I had pr put my laptop in the bedroom. So all I had to do was like get up and pull my laptop onto my lap and push the launch button. <laughs> um, I went back to sleep for about two hours. And when I woke back up, the campaign had already hit my first funding goal, which is insane. Um, <laughs> wow, I still can't wrap my head around it. It feels very surreal. Um, <laughs> for context, if you don't already know, I've been working on the Marcel Camp Cookbook for a year and a half. Um, initially, it was just going to be an ebook and some other people really, really wanted there to be a paperback version. And well, I don't know if you know, but printing paperback books is expensive. Um, so that's part of the reason that I decided to do the Indiegogo campaign is to be able to offer pre-orders for the book so that we could crowdfund the money it was going to take to buy all those paperbacks. Um, because I'm an independent author. I don't have a publisher. I'm self-publishing, doing all of those things. I made the book myself. I designed it in InDesign. Believe me, I lived in InDesign for six months. Um, I know people who love InDesign, and that's awesome. Um, I'm very, very happy to be not living in InDesign anymore and back to living in Premiere. I'm very stoked about that. Um, anyway, I did everything myself. I... Uh, Got a couple people to go through it to edit it for me which is awesome i very much appreciate my volunteer editors my volunteer recipe testers um all of those things anyway so that's the reason it's an indiegogo campaign and the second reason it's an indiegogo campaign is because my brother and i are gonna go to alaska in 2025 or at least that's the goal um i don't know if you know but alaska is expensive <laughs> Um, my super stripped back trip plan for us still means that we need to like have 10 grand between the two of us in order to make the trip to Alaska work. Um, that's around four to five grand per person. Obviously we would love to have more budget so we could do other cool things. Like I've heard that the helicopter tours in Alaska are like a must do thing um, because you get perspective on stuff that you just could not get any other way. But that's not that's not in the budget right now. Our beautiful strip back, bu strip back budget is like gas, camping most of the time, one hotel a week so that we can upload backup stuff and get a shower. Um, and then food, mostly making our own food, and then like one nice restaurant a week. And um, that includes tires, um, like really rough maintenance for the bikes, um, a little bit of travel insurance, because we're gonna go into Canada and then into the, to back into the US again. Um, so we're riding from Portland to Alaska. We're gonna go to the Arctic Circle. And then from there, we're gonna go see the Arctic Ocean in Tuktoyaktuk, which is in the Northwest Territories of Canada. Um, I wanted to do that instead of the Dalton Highway because I just have no interest in paying the oil company to take me in a van to see the ocean. This doesn't sound like fun to me. So <laughs> we're going to go to Tuk Tuk, um, and do the, I believe that's the dumpster highway. Oh my gosh. Trying to set us all off the cuff is difficult. Most of the time I have my computer in front of me when I'm looking at this information. <laughs> so if that's incorrect, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, anyway, so zooming back out to the Indiegogo campaign, um, and where that sits in our funding for the Alaska trip is that roughly 20% of the Indiegogo funds raised is going to go to our trip fund and 80% of the funds raised on Indiegogo goes towards fulfilling perks. And I'm going to say a really crazy number out loud. Um, that I didn't think was possible before this morning. Um, <laughs> I set the funding goal like very, 
um, to like the point where like I could get all the orders printed at a reasonable rate to get everybody's books out to them um, and not lose my butt on it. And that's like what the $5,000 goal was. In order for Gary and I to get fully funded for the Alaska trip, uh, I can't believe I'm going to say this words out loud. In order for Gary and I to go to Alaska, our stretch goal on Indiegogo is $25,000, which sounds insane speaking those words out loud. Um, <laughs> believe me, Gary and I are so, so grateful for all of the help you guys have given us, like just getting the Indigo campaign this far in the first day, which is un incredible. <laughs> it's more than I could have asked for. Just thank you. <laughs> but just between you and I, the stretch goal is 25K. That still sounds insane. Um, <laughs> let me catch up on the chat here. Hello. Hi, Sean. No galloping gourmet making food for two and inviting a guest from the audience to sample. I wish. That would be super fun. Hi, Tasha. That's how I cook. Eyeball it. My grandmother used to tell me a pinch of that or a little of that. Exactly. When I asked, gram asked my mom how to make our family's like bolognese recipe before I moved to Portland, it had never been written down, or at least <clears throat> not on our side of the family. We, don't, we didn't have like a written recipe card for that because my grandma Nett used to just always eyeball it. Like just, well, this is the size of the bell pepper this week. So we're just gonna put that together. And then she would like, um, oh, I had a spider friend on me. Hi, spider friend. Um, <laughs> she would just eyeball everything. So when I moved to Portland, I knew that I was gonna want to make the bolognese recipe when I got here because that's my comfort food, you know? And I knew that I was gonna be homesick. And so mom was like, well, I don't know. I just make it. So I had to record her making it so that later I could write down everything <laughs> so that I could try to make it here. And it took a couple tries, but I think I've finally gotten it to a point where I can recreate that now. But exactly, you get it. Um, my mom and grandma never used measurements. Exactly. Congratulations on hitting the goal. Thank you, Sean cooking aka modern day alchemy for real isn't that crazy baking especially i think is alchemy for sure a hundred percent because everything has to be so precise it's like a, a true chemical reaction when you're baking and i think like cooking is just uh forest witch magic <laughs> you do it by feel <laughs> Old Mountain Gnome, thank you so much. Just ordered an ebook and support funding. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Andy, I have a super simple one for you and you can just have it. Chicken, jar of tikka masala, simmer sauce, bag of Uncle Ben's basmati, crushed cashews, green onion, enjoy. I love that. Thank you, Andy. Sean says, what about Hawaii? Inflatable panniers and tank bag. <laughs> I think that's... Um, Maybe a project for the guys at Revzilla. <laughs> you have a lot of insane fans, though, so you got... <laughs> thank you, Andy. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for being here. Spider squirrels. <laughs> 25K. Let's make it happen. Thank you so much, Fred. Okay, I'm going to put... I'm going to start the stove now, and then you guys can tell me if this is obnoxious, and I'll try to move the stove farther away from me. Um... Dun, dun, dun. Okay, burner's on. You can tell me if that's too loud. Um, we've got our cherry tomatoes in the pan with some olive oil, and we're just going to start sauteing these down a little bit until they start getting wrinkly and squishing out their juices. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent, good. Where's my water? There. <laughs> oh, Fred, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers. I don't have, like, it's too a little bit too early my time for alcohol, but cheers. <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat. Mm. 
Andy. I saw you lost a hatchet, so I bought myself one. I'm not sure how that helped, but it helps. It happened anyhow. It helps. It totally helps. Um, for the record, I did replace that hatchet. I did get a new one. Everything's okay. I was just attached to that one. Um, baby backstory about that little Gear Aid hatchet. I met the folks of Gear Aid, who represent Gear Aid at events, um, at Overland Expo PNW literally a month before that trip that you guys just saw, the video that went up on Sunday. And um, I was just chit-chatting back and forth with them because I'm an ambassador for Exped and Exped and Gear Aid are essentially buddies. And so I was just chat like sitting at their booth and talking to them. It was like a slow Sunday and I was talking about doing the the ABV Fest trip and those kinds of things. And I believe that Gear Aid hatchet is fairly new. Um, and they were just so surprised about how well that did with the adventure rider market because I mean, it's like really handy <laughs> more than just, just a hatchet because the, the way that they made the, the blade cover, it doesn't cover the back end of the hatchet that you would normally use as a hammer. So it feels so much easier to use like when you're hammering in stakes and that kind of stuff because you're not hitting the plastic cover that covers the blade. You're hitting like the actual back end of the hatchet that's designed as a hammer. And then the tail end of the handle actually has a stake puller, which is so handy. Um, anyway, I made a deal with them that like they would give it to me. I would take some pictures of it and that trip to ADB Fest was the first trip that I had that hatchet. Um, <laughs> so part of the reason that I lost it is because it didn't, hadn't quite found its way, like, or found its place in my normal packing setup. I have been packing the same way for a really, really long time. So I know when something's missing, that's normally in my kit, you know, and that hatchet hadn't quite found its place yet. And so when Gary and I were in Crazy Woman Canyon, um, I would give him, I would do my tent stakes and then I would hand him the hatchet and he would do his tent stakes um, because Gary normally uses a rock. <laughs> and uh, so I gave it to him and when he was finished with it, he had been putting it next to my tent so that I would remember to put it back in my duffel bag. And when we were in Crazy Lone Canyon, he put it on the, in that little fire pit. I think you can see it in a couple shots. There was a makeshift fire pit made of gray stones, which the hatchet was also gray with a very small part of orange. Um, and I remember seeing it that night and being like, I need to put that over by my tent so I don't forget it. But because we had come down the canyon so early, we wanted to go set up camp and then go back to that beautiful section of the canyon that I shot a bunch of footage of. Um, and so we set up camp and then went back to the thing. So before we went back to that pretty section, I had seen it on the, f on the fireplace or whatever. And then I was like, I'll remember that when we get back. Well, I didn't remember when we got back. <laughs> um, and the next morning I completely just did not see it while I was packing up because it just blended so well into the stones. Um, and that spot was just a dispersed campsite, so there's nobody to call, you know, and I didn't realize that I didn't have it until we had gotten all the way to Red Lodge, which was 200 miles away. And I was dead set when I realized it was gone and I had my little panic attack and I went, I was like, I'm going to go get it. Like, I'm just going to go back. And Gary's like, you know. <laughs> And he made the argument that like, it was probably already gone. That area is pretty popular. Um, so somebody had, had probably already come and scoped out that site and was probably, it was probably already gone was the gist. Um, anyway, I replaced it later, but that's part of the reason that I forgot it. I'm really good about like, um, Things have their place in my gear and so it's hard for me to lose it because when I'm packing everything has its place and if something's missing it's pretty obvious because stuff doesn't go back the way it's supposed to <laughs> and the stuff that's small that kind of floats between different places in my gear is the stuff that's easier to lose and 
spoilers for the New England trip, but I lost the inReach for that reason, because it kind of floats between my my tank bag and my jacket, and <laughs> it kind of goes between the two. And at one point in, in New York, I was in service so often, I didn't need to pull it out every day. So I put it in my electronics duffel, or what I, I thought that I had put it in my electronics duffel. Turns out I didn't, it wasn't there. Um, <laughs> so I essentially traveled all the way through Maine and like all the way down to West Virginia before I was like, oh, I'm probably gonna be out of service. I'm gonna need this. And I went to pull it out and it was gone. Um, anyway, long tangents. <laughs> But that's the reason that I misplaced the hatchet. Okay, it's Orzo time. Hi. Okay, let me catch up here. Not loud, but I, I, I can't hear it, but I'm getting old. <laughs> Where's your assistant chef brother? Brother is in Montana. But if you're in the Portland area, he will be here this weekend at Moto Corsa to help me celebrate the launch party. Let's see here. Let's do, that looks about right. Ooh, maybe a little much. Eh, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, Eric Sweet, thank you so much for the super chat. Dinner out in Alaska, that is so... Thank you so much, Eric. That's so kind of you. Thank you. Cheers, my friend. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh goodness. I need to get moved. Um, <laughs> I'm. I need to practice this talking and cooking thing. Obviously. <laughs> there we go. I like to just get the orzo like all coated in the juices from the tomatoes before I add the water. It's weird. You don't have to do this. You could just add the water and orzo together. But I like to get it, I'll coat it, and then I add the water. There we go. We'll use this one for water. Also, you can totally eyeball pasta, especially even like one pot pastas. Um, in general, you just try to, to like, in, in volume, you just try to double um, the water in comparison to how much pasta you would in, put in. So even if your cup doesn't have measuring stuff in it, if you eyeball the pasta, especially small pastas, in general, small pastas, you want roughly a half a cup per serving. Um, so you kind of eyeball what kind of looks like about half a cup and then double that in water and you're golden. Did that make sense? I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> short, short pastas like orzo is the kind of the same rules as rice. You double it, double the liquid for the dry. I keep saying that out loud and I'm not, not sure if that makes sense. <laughs> uh... I messaged a while back about your new phone mount on Instagram. How is it so far? Thank you. Hi, Robin. Um, I love the Peak Design mount so far. I've taken it on quite a few trips this last month. It was in March. Um, and it's doing fine. My camera is still holding up well. I especially love the, um, the really slim mount on the back of my case because it's not, it doesn't stick out farther than my case on my phone. So I can still use, like, I have a little clampy mount in my office that holds my phone while I'm working <laughs> and um, a bunch of the other adapters from from other brands they're adapter they're universal adapters because I have an Android and a weird phone that nobody makes cases for um, I have the OnePlus 10 Pro or whatever yeah um, but like nobody makes cases for it so I always have to get the universal adapter and a bunch of the other adapters from different brands, their adapters stick out so much that it makes it hard for me to use my other phone mounts to have like the clamps. Um, did I already pull? I did pull one out already. Um, 
Anyway, so that part I really, really appreciate that Peak Design like made it super slim so it doesn't interfere with you holding the phone. It doesn't interfere with my other little clamp phone holder things. Um, tangent for a second. Are you following my six trains of thought? Um, with bouillon cubes, if you have like a small amount of water but you still want to add a bunch of flavor, if you crush this or just chop it up a little bit, it's going to like dissolve into the water so much better and you're not gonna have to like stir stuff around a ton especially if you're <laughs> kind of at max capacity of whatever cooking vessel you're using um so just a thing if you chop it up a little bit it dissolves so much better or you could just carry the powdered version of bouillon that you could also do that the cubes are just nice because they're all individually uh, packaged and i know one bouillon cube is for one cup of water do, 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 do. Put that in there. Excellent. And then all I have to do is like one like simple stir and I know that all that powder has dissolved really well and I'm not waiting for the cube to break apart in the water. If that makes, yeah. <laughs> um, talk, back to phone mounts. <laughs> the the mount on i have the handlebar mount on my bike and so it's just like a pop on and then i kind of shake it to make sure that's clipped in um and that's not gonna pop off and i've done a couple of dirt roads that like have been pretty bumpy it hasn't popped off which is more than i can say from for previous mounts that were just clamp <laughs> and when you get into weird stuff sometimes my phone will pop out when i dump the bike and that kind of stuff but so far, so good with the Peak Design mount. Actually, I have dumped the bike since I got the Peak Design mount, and it did. It stayed on. <laughs> Magic. Uh, Randy Rue, not sending books to Canada. Um, if you really, really want a book and you're international, and you understand that shipping internationally is frickin' expensive, email me and we will discuss options. That's, that's what I'll say about that. If you really want a paperback book and you understand that international shipping is outrageous, you can email me, we'll work something out. I didn't make um, the international shipping available on the Indiegogo campaign in general, like to the broader public that are just gonna stumble upon the campaign because in previous years when I was doing calendar sales, people always messaged me about how outrageous the sh international shipping is and s most of them were barely not nice about it and I have to be like I have no control over what I have to pay to ship things internationally that is has nothing to do with me I'm not a mega corporation I am a small individual person who doesn't send out enough packages to get those big discounts that a lot of bigger companies get when they ship internationally so it's going to cost a lot, is what I'm saying. <laughs> and I didn't want to deal with people being upset with me because of the insane cost of international shipping. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Audio is excellent. Can't hear any background noise. Awesome. Fantastic. Because there's a garbage truck that I can hear now. <laughs> the Moto Scout. Um... Do you mean the Moto Scout? Do you mean the, the link in the emails? Because if you were signed up for the early bird emails, I believe that there's a link for international shipping in those. But if you weren't signed up for early bird emails, then it's not public <laughs> on purpose. Speaking of you costing me money a while back, I bought the Exped Air Mattress because of you two. Yes! Andy, your life's gonna be so much better. The Exped Mattress is awesome. <laughs> Hi, John. Welcome, welcome. So excited for the cookbook. Thanks for inspiration to get out and do the thing. Thank you, Lennox. The intrusive thought, I better grab that and put it away, echoing harshly for the next few days. I've been there. Yes, thank you, Sean. I appreciate you understanding. Wow. Moto Scout says that the campaign's at $8,600 right now. That's crazy. Oh my, you guys, this is insane. <laughs> oh my god. Ah. 
Blue Ghost said, did you ever get your hatchet back? I saw that video. It was great. Uh, thank you. Um, I did not get the original hatchet back. I ended up buying a new one later because I liked it a lot. <laughs> and hats. Hats are definitely easy to, to lose. That's for sure. Thank you, Andy. Um, that's why I have, I made my own hat carrier, so they're harder. This, I have lost this one. I got this one in May last year and it went on every trip with me with my little hat carrier and I haven't lost it. So I'm pretty proud of that. It went all the way across the country with me and all the way back. Um, did Gary make you feel better by tossing his tent rock and then saying, see sis, I lost my hatchet hammer too. <laughs> Gary did not do that, but that would have been very amusing. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> same with rice pot and yes, yes, same with rice and pot. Exactly. Got my order in, gotta go pour concrete, so I'll watch the rest on replay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for supporting the campaign. Hi, Jima Rides. Hello. Grandma Grandma Rides? Jima Rides? Is it Jima Rides or Grandma Rides? Hi, Robin. I'm a dreaded Android user too. Thank you. We, we, sh we need to stick together, you know. <laughs> Guess I'm computer challenged. Tried ordering two books for gifts. Says Canada unavailable. Mm. Um, Randy, you has to be the, the, it has to be the international tier. You can't just order the regular, like email me, just email me. <laughs> Sean, I do want to go to Goose Bay, Labrador. My dad flew for the USAF um, out there in the 1950s. I've only been to BC to go skiing and Montreal for summer jazz festivals. Really looking forward to it. Yes, excellent. I go into Canada a lot for work, but I've never been exploring camping. Mm, yes. Hi, David. It's lovely to see you in the chat. Hello. Darren, USPS perhaps? Actually, USPS for international shipping is even more expensive than other options. <laughs> and most of the time, USPS international shipping has to go through, like, you, if you try to ship internationally with USPS, they send it to a distribution place, and then that distribution place ends up actually shipping it internationally, which is part of the reason why it's more expensive, because you're kind of using the USPS as a middleman instead of using uh, another company that does you international shipping, if that makes sense. Um, curious with the super chat purchases, what percentage do you receive? I think this is just numbers off the top of my head, so don't quote me. I think YouTube takes three or five percent in like transaction fees, and then I get the rest when I get the regular AdSense money. The nerd part of this is like um, on the back end of YouTube, when YouTubers get all their money from the ads that are played on their videos, you get that once a month as long as you hit the threshold. Um, and super chats and super thanks um, and all of those things, uh, the ways that you can support creators, don't get that money immediately. It actually gets added to that lump sum total with AdSense. And so I will get the super chats from all of you wonderful human beings next month in the middle of the month when I get the check for AdSense for the previous month. I said that weird, but I think it made sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a Tilly hat. They rock. Yes. I mean, flaming is still camping. Just don't call RV RVing camping. There's nothing wrong with RVing. It's just not camping. It's, glamping is a good word for RVing. I like that. Um, finally caught a live. Hi, Paul. It's lovely to see you in the chat. Hello. Journey of Jerry says 30%. YouTube keeps 30%. Oh. Uh, I have to look at that. Ooh. The wind is picking up. Oh, geez. I should have brought out my wind blocker. I wasn't even thinking about it. 
I'm looking to get printed books. Ebook is emailed PDF, but I guess beggars and Canadians can't be choosers in the instance, so PDF will have to do. Randy, email me. <laughs> Yay! Strangely, those USPS shipments end up with different duty duty charges. I have had shipments cross where there is no duties due, then other times significant charges. Frustrating. I will email you for a book. Excellent. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> I appreciate the like better insight into USPS. It's like this big thing. I just know that it's more expensive to ship internationally with USPS than other carriers. They can't, they're, they're, I can't think of them off the top of my head. Is it FedEx or is it UPS? Maybe it's FedEx. I think FedEx has an international branch and that's cheaper than USPS. And there's this other, other company. Yeah. I, I just started, I just signed up for another company called Easy Ship because that's like what most people use to um, buy shipping to fulfill perk orders on Indiegogo. And I was like, well, we'll give this a try and see if it's cheaper than my, my, uh, cause normally I use stamps.com um, or Etsy uh, because the, they, get, they have a small discount on package shipping. And so Easy Share seems to have better pricing, but it's still going to be really expensive. And they have a wider variety of shipping carriers that you can purchase shipping from. Um, and they have a couple of other carriers so you can pick which one is going to be cheapest with, with, with what carrier, including taxes and fees that in, are involved with shipping out of the U.S. Because you have to pay the gunk to, to say that you're exporting a product, I guess. <laughs> Even if it's media. Oh, D it is not DHL is what I'm, it's not what I'm thinking about. But DHL is an option, that's for sure. Oof. Do I have one of my wind blockers in here? Oh, goodness. Oh, geez. Did my flame blow out? The wind is picking up. Are you still lit? You blew out. There we go. FedEx percolator per ups, even post office can work out well. The duty anomalies can happen anywhere. I'm a few minutes behind. Pause video. Hi, Fred. Well, I'm glad you're back. <laughs> Illegal poutine for the fries. <gasps> we don't. Illegal things. Oh my goodness. Can't be discussing illegal things on the podcast. Not on the podcast? We're not podcasting. We're just cooking. I might need to go get a wind blocker, you guys. Um, hello, beautiful people. Let's, let's see where the campaign is at. We're at night. <gasps> you guys. <laughs> the Indiegogo campaign just hit nine thousand dollars oh my god i can't what <laughs> what this is insane what oh my god wow wow i I don't have words right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> the, the jet boil stove is disappointing. It's not disappointing. That was a really strong breeze. And uh, there's normally, there's like a little plastic wind blocker that you're supposed to use so that the Thing doesn't blow out. I didn't. I didn't put it on because <laughs> I was lazy. Um, <laughs> in general, I actually love this stove. Um, I carried it across the country with me, not because anybody went with me, but because I it grew on me and I love using it. And also because for the cross country trip, I did a. I had a contract with KOA. 
Um, and K-Way's normal audiences are actually RVers or car campers who would normally have like a propane two burner stove. So they were concerned if I was cooking on a little isobutane stove, it wouldn't be relatable to their audience. Um, the contract was for me to make um, a handful of recipe videos um, for their TikTok. Um, so I won't be posting them, they'll all be on the KOA TikTok, and I think that she agreed to post a couple of them on Instagram for me. Oh, the truck's coming closer, that might get loud. Um, anyway, so you might see a couple of them. If you're on the clock app, you might see, uh, head over to KOA. I think that they posted one of them so far. I think the plan is for them to sprinkle them out throughout the summer. Um, anyway, it was a dream job. I It was incredible to get to work for KOA. And I hope that I get to work with them again because they were incredible human beings to work with. I have fully grown attached to the KOA camping cabin situation, especially in New England, because the camping cabins were often cheaper than the hotels, um, which was crazy. <laughs> like normally I can like find like a cheap Motel 6 under a hundred bucks, but not in New England. Um, in New England, most of the time, the, the Motel 8 or whatever was like 120 plus tax and I could often find like a KOA camping cabin for like 90 bucks or 80 bucks depending on the branch of KOA. Um, so like that was fantastic for my budget. I did pay for all of the KOAs out of pocket up front and then I got my check from KOA later for the whole project. Um, so I was able to pick which KOAs I wanted to go to and then I paid for those out of pocket and then a couple months later I got my check from KOA. Um, Anyway, where was I going with this? Oh, the stove. <laughs> Easily distracted. I'm so sorry for the dump truck noise. He should be done soon. Um, <laughs> anyway, I had the stove for the whole cross country trip. The other thing that is not in the cross country trip videos is that I carried two sets of kitchen kit for that whole trip. <laughs> so I had like the this stove and like my old set of Cedar Summit gear, um, and that's what you'll probably see in the videos is the old kit. Um, and I was also carrying the whole new set of Cedar Summit gear because I needed to take pictures of them for Cedar Summit and <laughs> they, the embargo hadn't lifted for the public yet. So not only was I carrying this giant propane stove in my saddlebags, I was also carrying a whole extra set of like a pan, a pot, and like bowls and stuff so I could take pictures of that on the side um, and then in conjunction with my normal kit with the skillet and the pot and everything. Yeah, so when you look at my bags in the cross country trip videos, just know there's a reason that I look overpacked and it's because I'm carrying way more stuff than normal <laughs> so that I can fulfill other jobs. <laughs> Anyway, oh, somebody asked like what the stove was. I'm sorry. Um, this is the Jetboil Genesis um, 2. So it's the second m version of the stove. And the thing that I like about it is that it's like a two burner like propane stove that like we're kind of accustomed to. Like you remember like the old propane like suitcase style, Coleman, Coleman propane suitcase style of stoves, but they're like kind of really big packed and they're not really ideal to take on a bike unless you have like a trailer. Um, the, the Jebo Genesis folds in half, which makes it like a much more compact pack size. So it's like more like this packed instead of a big suitcase, which I know is still very large, but this will fit in my saddlebag and the Coleman won't, if that it means anything to you. <laughs> Googled YouTube rate and it seems 30% is the real number that they keep. Super congrats on the indie numbers. Fun to watch your live this experience. Thank you. Thank you guys. You're amazing. What is my beverage of choice for this live? It is water. <laughs> it's midday for me, you guys. So we're just, we're just drinking water right now. I think we're getting close on food though. Yeah.
I just want to stir it every once in a while so that the as the liquid reduces the orzo doesn't get stuck on the bottom. That's the nice thing about cooking this in a non-stick is that it's way less likely to actually stick on the bottom and that's really nice. Excellent. Eee, can't wait for this PDF for me. I'm in the UK. Thanks, James. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for telling the chat what the stove was, Andy. I appreciate it. <laughs> Maybe you and brother can load up on books right over and toss them over the Canadian border for those up north. <laughs> I'll have to I'll have to talk to Gary about that. <laughs> We might make Amanda cry. I was close. I was, it was close. <laughs> the flame is all or nothing. Very little control. I don't think that. I feel like the, the flame on the jet boil has like more variance than the like isobutane backpacking stove. I have the spot, like the Primus Spider Express 2 and the low flame on that is like the medium flame on this. Um, and then, of course, like, it, there's no comparison between this and, like, the MSR, like, pocket rocket, because that's definitely a stove that is on or off. <laughs> like, it's either, like, boiling water super fast or it's off. <laughs> oh, link to order one. I'm sorry, Jerry. Give me, give me two shakes. Hold on. I gotcha. Trying to keep an eye on food and talk at the same time. I'm doing a blast over here. <laughs> Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Also, I believe Moto Campner just got a new shipment of the jet boil stoves. So that's excellent news. Da, 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 da. Make sure that's the right link. Yes. Here is the Moto Campner link to the jet boil. And then, oh, his website says that there's only one left. So, <laughs> link for the jet boil in the chat now. I'm out. I'm I'm slowly catching up. <laughs> it's an Indiegogo. I thought it was on Amazon or something. Is the link here? Hi, John. I will drop the link for you also. Um, boom cookbook bam 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 that is the link to the indiegogo campaign i hope i'm hoping knock on wood um to have the epub version of the book on amazon in in the winter next winter essentially um so part of the reason I the this initial release is the PDF ebook version of the book is because I wanted it to look pretty, <laughs> um, and I ha would have to completely reformat the book for EPUB because it has to be in a totally different format so that when it's on a Kindle or an e-reader or something like that, when you like increase the text and decrease the text, um, the format of that book has to be malleable so that the text can be increased and decreased like that. Um, which means all the formatting of my beautiful pages will be lost. <laughs> um, so the, it was crunch time just getting the printable version of the book ready and formatted to get books started um, this last month. It was last month, yes. Um, and then to also make a beautiful, like a linked version of the PDF that will go out to all of you in May. And I didn't want to like also add another thing onto my plate about trying to reformat the book for EPUB. I know you can pay people to, to do that, but that's also a money that's coming out of my Alaska trip fund. So I'd rather do it myself if I can. Pretty sure I can. I just, it's more time essentially is the gist. Um, so the goal is to have the EPUB version up on Kindle and hopefully uh, Nook for the people who do use that and then have an EPUB version of the book 
just like the regular EPUB file available in my shop. So if you have a third party e-reader, you can just buy the EPUB file directly from me um, and uh, have those things available in November, December. Don't quote me. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Um, but just for this initial release, it's just going to be the, the PDF ebook of the copy of the book and then the paperback, which is printed in Montana. The wonderful folks at Printing Center USA, which is who I did the calendars with last year, um, they're actually uh, located in Great Falls, Montana. Um, and because the book is like that lovely small six by nine um, with the soft touch laminate cover and it's paperback, they were able to print that in Montana. So last week, my parents actually went to pick up the first box of books um, so I could have them at the launch party this weekend. And um, so like, because the book is printed in the USA, in Montana, my parents were able to just go and literally go to the place that those books were printed and pick them up. And um, they're gonna be bringing them this uh, weekend. Yes, um, which is incredible and was really important to me um, that the books were printed in the USA. The fact that they got to be printed in Montana was just like icing on the cake for me. <laughs> and the people over at Printing Center USA have just like been incredibly like responsive and they're all, they love the book, which like made me happy, obviously. Like, yes, thank you for the compliments. Um, <laughs> Um, so that's been super, super cool. And that's part of the reason that retail for the book is going to be $40. It's because just printing those books um, is about $30, $31 per book. Um, because it's in the USA, it's just going to be more expensive. Um, but I think that's a fair trade because they're printed in the USA. <laughs> um, and they don't have to be shipped on a big cargo ship and probably like sit in a harbor somewhere before I get them. Um, and it means that when I get those books printed for all of you, the, the like shipping and getting them out to you process is going to be so much faster than if I went with an overseas printer because I don't have to wait for them to cross an ocean on a boat. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Um, also, I just feel really good about supporting jobs in Montana because I'm from Montana. Um, ooh, I think we're getting just about done here. Ooh, there's the wind. Yes, we're done. We are probably done a minute, a couple minutes ago. I just wasn't paying attention. I was talking. Um, dun, 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 dun. I have a spoon somewhere. Eh. Okay. I guess Gary will get to go now. <laughs> um, Paul, I think you... Uh, uh, earlier, um, I don't know if you were in here already, but the um, the the outside number on Indiegogo, um, 80 percent of the r funds raised actually goes to fulfilling perks, and then 20 percent of that number will go to Gary and I's trip to Alaska. Um, if you scroll down the Indiegogo page, there's like a little nerd spreadsheet that I made for our stripped back budget. Um, and so we roughly need about 10 grand to make the trip happen for both of us, which is around like four and a half to five grand per person. Um, so the big crazy number, which, you know, is like stretch, like defined stretch goal. This is a stretch goal. Um, the big, big number that we have to hit for Gary and I to fully be funded to go to Alaska in 2025 um, is $25,000 on Indiegogo. And that is a lot. And at no point in my wildest dream did I think that we were going to even get close to that. The fact that we're already at $9,000 is insane to me. This is crazy. <laughs> um, like this is more than I could have hoped for. Like this is incredible. Um, so yeah, we, we have a little bit of ways to go like before like we actually like hit the number where like 100% we get to go to Alaska. 
but like I never intended for the book to fully fund the trip. I was I was just hoping that we would could get like halfway there, you know? Um, and we're really, really close to halfway there right now <laughs> on the first day of the campaign, which is insane. Um, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, um, it's crazy. Make your brother mow when he gets there. <laughs> it's actually my job to mow the yard and I've been so busy prepping the cookbook. I haven't had a chance to mow since the weather has gotten nicer here. Um, so I, I will do it. You can blame me. It's okay. She explained earlier the initial funding just covers the book and perk costs. She will uh, need to hit the stretch goals to fund the trip. So spread the word. Thank you, Moto Scout. I appreciate you. Cheers for New England. I'll take that news happily. Thank you, Sean. How did you find your way back to the stove as the start of, the ta of that tangent? <laughs> I have experience with tangents. It is my special power. Um, uh, it's taken a long time to develop that skill to come back to the point of where I was going. Um, <laughs> shipping ain't your fault, just a part of living in Canada. It's true. If when you manage to do a trip through Europe, could you see yourself doing another cookbook based on the food here? I would love to see your reaction to a deep fried Mars bars from Scotland. Thank you, Colin. I think that would be so much fun. I would love to tour Europe. Um, the, uh, the reason, um, well, there's a couple reasons why I haven't traveled internationally yet. And one of them is because uh, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the other reason, the big reason, is because in for the for the OGs who've been around for a long time, in 2018 I went to Baja with a bunch of people. Um, on that trip, I realized that I really, really, really do not like traveling in big groups. And by big groups, I mean there was eight of us, and most days we split into two groups of four. Um, to get from point A to point B and then we met up at the end of the day. Um, so that trip really defined how I think about travel partners and how carefully I try to pick them. And the other thing that that trip uh, like taught me essentially was that, at th so at that point in 2018, I had been to most of the states on the west half of the US. So like everything west of the Mississippi and I had been to Missouri. <laughs> once <laughs> a long time ago um but as far as like traveling goes and like knowing about the united states i had like pretty much been to all the states on the west half of the mississippi with the exception of a few of the midwest states and um when i went to baja a bunch of the locals would just like when just having a normal conversation with locals like they would ask me questions about different parts of the u.s like the east coast and like in new england and in the south and like places I hadn't been to and I would have to be like I don't I don't know and I hated I hated having to say I don't know I'm not, I haven't been there because the people from other countries it's the US like they I think some like some people don't have like a understanding of how large the US is <laughs> um, so for me to be from the US and say like say I don't I don't know um, to like a simple question about the East Coast or like something like that. Um, it just was off-putting. Like I felt terrible. Like I wasn't representing our country. And when I got back from that trip, I decided that I was going to visit all of the states in the United States before I intentionally traveled internationally again. Um, so that was part of the, like the last three cross-country trips was so that I could knock off all of the states in the lower 48. And then Alaska is the last one um, before I feel like I have, I, I now have like a good base knowledge. I obviously have not been everywhere in the United States. I can't answer all the questions, but I feel better now to represent our country in other countries. Does that make sense? I, I, I hope that I said that in a way that makes sense. Um, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so that's part of the reason I haven't traveled internationally yet is because I want to scratch off all the states before I like go represent the US in another country again. 
Um, and of course, like we have to go through Canada to get to Alaska, but <laughs> beggars can't be choosers and I'm not riding a ferry. <laughs> so, or at least I'm not riding the big long ferry that goes from Seattle to Alaska. One, it's more expensive than driving the motorcycles. And two, I don't want to be on a boat for that long. <laughs> I am a land creature. <laughs> I like I feel very at home in the mountains and not on the water. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, like the bigger, broader answer of your question is, I would love to get to travel in Europe. I would absolutely love that. Um, I would love to get to go to Sicily and see where my ancestors ancestors come from. Um, my ancestors. Does that sound weird? I would love to get to see where my great great grandma came from. I would love that so so much. Great great is it two greats? Might be three. I think it's two. I would ask to ask my mom. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I love food. As far as writing another cookbook, maybe, possibly. A lot like most of the recipes in this cookbook are like pretty like whole foods based. Um, and the UK and Australia, um, have like a pretty similar access to fresh produce that we have in the U S like, obviously not everything, but better than some other countries. I had somebody email me about like the availability of, of produce in India and if there, if some of the recipes would be adaptable there. And the front half of the book actually has a substitution section. Um, so a lot of the, the vegetarian section of the book, you can like go to the, oh, you are not going to be able to see that. <laughs> there's a substitution spread in the front of the book. And, um, there's a section for quick cooking vegetables and slow cooking vegetables. So that like, if you come across like in the vegetarian section or the veggie, the plant-based section is what it's technically called. Um, if you come across like um, some kind of produce that you don't have access to in your country, if you go to the front of the book and go to like quick versus slow cooking vegetables, you might be able to replace it with something else that is available. Um, the The gist of my conversation with from the the person in India was like, they could probably make a little bit over half of the recipes in the book with just the stuff that's available without having to go to an international market. Um, for UK and Australia, really, there's only like, ma like max probably six or seven recipes that could not be adapted to stuff that is available in your country. Um, and that's only because I don't know if you guys have access to like golden, golden curry roux in the UK. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen it in international, like I've, <laughs> I've watched a lot of vlogs from other people internationally, and I'm pretty sure that I've seen golden curry available in Australia, but you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but like golden curry is literally just roux blocks of Japanese curry. That's, that's it. Like, and if you really wanted to, you could make a Japanese curry from scratch with garam masala and curry powder, um, and a couple of other spices and a little bit of flour and just make roux. It's just harder on a camping stove, which is why in the book I suggest using golden curry. Um, yeah, there's just like a like couple of recipes like that um, where I do use like something, something that's packaged that may or may not be available. But m the vast majority of the recipes, I try to stick with like whole food ingredients that like, if you couldn't get this exact kind of vegetable, you could get something similar like, and like pasta, you could just get a different kind of pasta shape or whatever. Um, so yeah, most most of them should be translatable to the international audience. The I think the more annoying thing than ingredients is actually going to be translating the um, uh, U.S. measurements to metric. But I do have a conversion sheet in the back of the book. I made you a conversion sheet. <laughs> Let's see. I just got home from work. Are you going to save me some? I'm starving. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, the wolfman was full. That's for sure. Do I have the mini frying pan today? Let's, I think this is eight inches. 
I'm pretty sure this is my eight inch um, fry pan from the new Sea to Summit line. This is the Frontier pan, which is nonstick, which has pretty much replaced the Alpha pan and the Sea to Summit um, line. So my old Alpha pan was also eight inches, but the walls weren't this tall. So the new um, Frontier nonsticks uh, pan is actually nicer because the walls are deeper, which makes it way easier to make one pot, one skillet recipes like this, because when you add the liquid, you're not like this close to the edge of the skillet. So when you stir it, you're like spilling stuff half the time. Mm -hmm. Well, says purchase both. I hope you make your goal of 25 K and then some, I am also hoping to ride to Alaska in 2025. You could in the future make a video of playing that would be tremendously helpful. I will. I, I will definitely do that. And he says, I went to my cousin's wedding in Scotland and ran ar around Edinburgh for a couple days. That's awesome. You're going to make fun of how I just said Edinburgh, but that's okay. <laughs> Ed Edinburgh. I, <laughs> if I say it fast, it just comes out funny. <laughs> that looks delicious and now I'm hungry. <laughs> I need to pull out my old camping gear from 20 years ago and see what still works. Good idea. Excellent idea. Especially because it's spring. It's time to pull out your gear and see what needs to be cleaned, what needs to be fixed, and what needs to be replaced before. Um, ideally, not right before you plan to use it. <laughs> it would be nice if your cookbook was a scratch and sniff kind. <laughs> then I must be having issues with my regulator. Yes, Andy. I would I would reach out to um, Jetboil's customer service if you can um, and ask them about your stove. What tent am I using now? I just, um, so on the cross country trip, which the first episode is coming very, very soon. If not this Sunday, then next Sunday. Um, I got a new tent from Exped. It's actually the Exped Mira 2. Um, and the, while there's a couple of things that I miss about the Big Agnes, um, there's a lot of really lovely things about the Exped tent. And that is that the floor space of the Mira 2 is, so much bigger than the Big Agnes. <laughs> I was like, I was setting up my tent the way I normally do, and I was like, am I missing something? Because it wasn't like pushed up against the walls the way that it normally is when I set up the Big Agnes. Um, so that was incredible. I loved that part. It doesn't have the short poles the way that the Big Agnes tent does, but since I pack all my camping stuff in my four liter duffel anyway, or the, well, the new duffels are actually 30 liters, not 40. So they're slightly, they're not as wide, so they sit on the back of the bike a little bit better. Um, because the then for the cross country trip, I also got totally new bags. Um, Wolfman from er, uh, Eric from Wolfman Luggage um, has started a new line of bags called Threadworks, Wolfman Threadworks, and they're all made by Eric. So they're all made in the USA. They're made by him in Southern California, um, and he made me all new bags including custom saddlebags. He made me custom saddlebags just for me because I'm needy and I need a lot of space. <laughs> Which was just incredible. Um, anyway, so the new duffels that I will have in the cross country series, those are like 30 liters instead of the big 40. But my the, the point is that the Exped tent still fits in it fine um, because I still use the same packing method in um, the duffel so that at camp I can just take one duffel off and set up um, my shelter and everything and then deal with the rest of it um, instead of dig digging through three bags just to set up camp. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm using the Exped Mira 2 right now. That's the current tent because the footprint like inside the usable floor space is uh, bigger and also because I'm Exped Ambassador, so there's that. <laughs> But also the, the Big Agnes tent is now gonna be five years old um, and she needs some tender love and care, um, including the dreaded having to reseam my rain fly to keep it waterproof. Um, if you didn't know, this is nerd information that I know because I worked at REI, um, most tents on the market, and I say most because some brands have different claims for longevity of their tents, but most tents need to be re-seam sealed between four and five years after you purchase them. 
um, if you get an older model tent like or a used tent like that lifespan might be shorter because you don't know what that tent had like how long that tent has been in storage how like or if you're going to use tent you don't know like how the previous owner stored that tent as well um, so the lifespan of a tent um, and the seam sealing that keeps it waterproof can actually be shortened if you keep your tent in a garage where it experiences rapid temperature fluctuations um, humidity fluctuations uh, so ideally if you have the space you would keep your camping gear like in a gear closet in your house with like that's relatively re temperature regulated um, instead of in your garage because it's really going to extend the life of your gear so that five year mark is assuming that you're going to keep your tent um, like loosely packed in a storage bag in a temperature regulated space obviously that's not how all of us keep our gear in storage and most of us don't even unpack it for storage over the winter so that shortens the lifespan of those like chemical compounds in the seam sealant that keeps your tent waterproof um, also the the chemical coating on the rain fly as well I'm getting deep in the weeds right now and I don't know who I have bored I'm sorry <laughs> And the whole point of this rant is that the big Agnes has now gotten to a point that I have re-waterproofed the outside of the rain cover three times now and the seam sealant which is like that clear tape that goes over all the seams in the bathtub of your tent and on the rain fly I need to scrape it off and re-seam seal it to keep it waterproof. That's the point of that rant. It needs some tender love and care. <laughs> And I didn't have time to do that before the cross country trip, so Xped sent me a tent, <laughs> which I'm very happy with. It was a fantastic tent for the whole trip, and I'm glad that I had it. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. So this is the first edition. Start referring to it that way from now on. <laughs> I will try. Uh, have you tried cooking on a Trangia? I got my first set last uh, fall and I'm taking it with me motor camping this summer. I haven't personally tried a Trangia. I have friends who have tried their Trangia and it's very 50-50. It seems like a very divisive piece of kit. Um, one, because of the bulk of the setup um, it's larger than if I just took my normal Suda Summit pans and a look and like my normal spider stove. Um, but then again, it's not larger than the jet boil packed. Right. Um, and then like some people just like love it because it's like all this like unified system with like built in like, uh, wind blockers and everything. And some people do not. So I haven't tried it. And that's my statement. <laughs> <laughs> How is Gary doing 2024 trips in Alaska update if it can be shared? Um, Gary is doing great right now. Um, as far as I know, Gary's doing great right now. Um, we're dealing with some like ranch things involved with like selling cattle, but uh, that's like a neither here nor there thing. Um, <clears throat> Uh, 2024 plans. Uh, if you go to as the magpie flies .com, ooh, I need to drink some water. <clears throat> 2024 plans if you go to as the magpieflies.com and you go to the about and the drop down there's a thing that says event schedule and that literally has a list of everything we're doing this year um mostly me some things gary will be with me for but mostly me <laughs> um gary will be at overland expo west with me in may that's our our May trip this year is that we're going to Arizona um, and halfway in the middle of our trip we'll be at Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, Arizona. So if you're in Arizona, please come see us. I will have physical books there as well. Um, I'll be teaching classes like normal. Um, the other trip in July is kind of up in the air, so I don't have specifics about that right now. Um, but yeah, if you go to asmyfiflies.com, 
um, you can find my event schedule there and that will tell you all the things about 2024 plans. Um, I don't have a major update about the Alaska trip, really, um, that I haven't already said. Order first thing this morning. Thank you, William. Are you planning to ride to Alaska or take the ferry and ride in Alaska? We are riding to Alaska and then to Tuk Tuk. I am not saying it correctly. Tuk Tuk Tuk? Tuk Tuk Tuk. Uh, eventually, I'm going to get that correctly. Um, we're going to Alaska. Well, we're going to ride to the Arctic Circle sign in Alaska, and then we're going to go ride what I believe is the Dumpster Highway in Canada to the Northwest Territories to see the Arctic Ocean there because I don't want to pay an oil company to take me in a van to see the Arctic Ocean. That's, <laughs> that's the gist. Um, we're not taking the ferry because I don't want to be on a boat for that long and it's more expensive than just riding there. I'll be ordering when I'm off work. Thank you, Wolf. Perfect timing with the weather. We've been having ready to get out there. Awesome. I'm getting very hungry. It's 5.30 p.m. here. Haven't eaten yet. Eric, you need to eat. Ebook ordered because postage the UK. Looking forward to getting my hands on the book. So proud of you for accomplishing the book launch. Looking forward to seeing you and Gary going to Alaska. Thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. I haven't seen her do a stream in a bit. She's usually getting tipsy sitting in her tent. Ha, 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 ha. It's too early for liquor, you guys. I ordered the digital paperback this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Crunchy Ham. Welcome, welcome. Crunchy, you're, you missed her full theatrical performance of Mick. <laughs> I, I think of all the insects in Alaska during the summertime would be my hardest problem. Excellent point, Jerry. Um, I have a plan for this, actually. I may have gone overboard, um, and I'm just going to continue testing what ridiculous things I can carry on a motorcycle. And I got um, essentially a pop-up gazebo thing. It, does, it actually doesn't pack that much bigger than my current tent, um, but it's so that like we can have a fully closed in ventilated place to cook dinner that I won't get attacked by mosquitoes. And so like to give you a little bit more perspective so that you're not like Amanda, do not cook inside of a tent. You're smarter than that. I am smarter than that. Um, that's fact. Um, <laughs> think about like the 10 by 10 foot space that a normal pop-up takes up, right? So this pop-up gazebo thing. I can't think of a good word. Screen hut? Maybe is the right word. Um, it's, it's t the, it takes up the 10 by 10 foot space. All of the walls are that mesh um, to keep the bugs out and then it, it kind of folds down the bottom. It doesn't have a full bottom. There's not like a bathtub on it. It just kind of folds under um, and then it has like kind of a rainproof top. Um, I'm, I'm suspecting that it's more um, re water resistant than actually waterproof, but we'll be spraying it before we go up. So if we do have to put it up in the rain, um, hopefully it will keep more water out than not. I'm losing my braid over here. Um, anyway, it, it doesn't pack down huge. It probably takes up the same amount of space as a decent sized cot, like a backpacking cot. Um, so I'll be carrying that so that when we're in Alaska, because I know the mosquitoes are going to be terrible, I will be able to put that up and we will sit in the middle of it and um, make dinner, hopefully less accosted by mosquitoes than we would otherwise be. <laughs> this is my plan. <laughs> is it another ridiculous thing that I'm adding to my kit? Absolutely. Am I going to be grateful for it? Probably. <laughs> Your cinematography vid vids and pictures of, of Ride on the Beartooth were absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate it. Um, oh, did I just miss? Robin, thank you so much for the super chat. Cheers, my thank you so much. Mm -hmm. oh, my food is getting cold. That's okay. It'll reheat. Oh. Let's see here. 
Oh my goodness, I'm so so I'm so far behind. <laughs> Thank you, Moto Scout, for keeping everybody update while I'm super behind in the chat. Chris says yes, that made sense because you are an amazing human, and I love the reason for touring the U.S. Thank you. Um, can I recommend a flying ride to Mua to, Ma to Maui? The road to Hana was great on dual sports. I I did get to drive the road to Hana. I was not on a motorcycle because it was like right after I got my cast off. Um, when I after I broke my wrist, it was this hand actually. Um, I wasn't able to rent a motorcycle because I wasn't allowed to ride yet. But um, Jonathan and I got rented got a rental car and we got to drive the road to Hana for my birthday a couple years ago, which was awesome. Um, it was incredible and I can totally see where road to Hana would be so much better on a motorcycle. That road is very narrow. Um, uh, John Thomas is Zitto an Italian name. Zitto is a Sicilian name. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> calamity. Oh my goodness. My cat is trying to make a mess. Calamity. Thank you. <laughs> Even more fantastic is your million dollar smile, Amanda. It just makes the day brighter seeing a smile. Thank you. Um, wearing my dork in the road shirt today. <laughs> Original internet writing buddy. Yeah. Golden Curry Cubes available everywhere in the UK. Uh, that makes me feel better. Thank you so much for the confirmation. Um, ooh, da -da. Um, Paul, we had orzo, tomato, and asparagus, like one skillet. And it, it's delicious. It's my favorite thing. I eat it all the time. I eat it at home and on the road. It's super easy and I don't think about it. Um, Bye, Sean. Thank you for being here. Anything that still works was worth buying. This is facts. I think a pinch of salt and a dash of pepper translates very well internationally. <laughs> this is true. Um, what cooking knife, if any, do you carry on the bike? I have been looking at the folding ones. A fold? Oh, you're talking about like the open L knives. I have tried the open Ls. I don't like it for chopping because it just doesn't have, you don't have like a good space to grip the blade, like, because the handle is round. I don't know. Everybody has their own preference. I know people who love the open L's. I just, it interferes with my normal chopping speed. <laughs> um, these are the new Sea to Summit stainless steel knives. Um, the whole handle is stainless steel and it, it's like pretty weighty. So it feels really nice and solid in your hand instead of the, the chopping knives that have the plastic handle. This is stainless steel all the way through. Um, so they have the big one and they also have a smaller kind of like more paring style knife. Um, and then they have the little lovely uh, blade cover that I'm not going to put on right now because I need to wash this. Um, but I, these have been incredible. I'm, I'm here for this. <laughs> um, let's see. I bought Outdoor Vitals, two-person trekking poles, tent, excellent. I hope that that is like, um, I hope that, that that's working for you, Andy. Have you gotten to use it yet? Um, who's Ed and Burr, haha, <laughs> is the, <laughs> I knew, I knew you would make fun of me for the way I said it. Is the new tent compact like the Big Agnes? Um, so pack size, um, if you if you're not talking about poles, pack size the expat tent does pack down just as small as the body of the Big Agnes. Um, the tent poles on the expat are more like the traditional length of tent like of, of backpacking tents, so they're like 17 inches, I think. Um, if you have large saddlebags, they will still fit in a saddlebag. If you have small saddlebags, they won't because the Big Agnes uh, tent has like the 12 inch or 13 inch uh, short poles. The Exped has regular backpacking poles instead of bike packing poles. Um. <laughs> 92. Oh my God. We're at $9,400. What we're about to hit ninety five hundred dollars. What what is happening? This is crazy. Oh my god. 
Wow. <laughs> this is insane, you guys. I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm thinking of trying a hammock this year, but have a fear of falling out of it. That's fair. <laughs> um, I have, I have slept in a hammock. I did not fall out of it. Um, but I, I keep sticking with the freestanding tents because I still end up at way more places that it would be really difficult to set up a hammock, um, without also carrying like the freestanding poles. Um, and the inclusion of the poles really doesn't decrease the pack size of the hammock and I can still get on the ground and get in my tent. So I'm sticking with that until I can't anymore, essentially. <laughs> I stayed for the tent lesson. <laughs> well, thank you for sticking through my tent lesson. That's very kind of you. Um, my Sierra Design tent rainfly ripped on the lower corner. Oh no, John. Um, John, if you haven't um, patched that more than duct tape, I would recommend um, Gear Aid makes wonderful gear patches like gear tape um, that will patch that and hold for forever. So much better than duct tape and it won't leave, like once you, once you clean it off, you will, well, you have to get the goo from the duct tape off of your tent and then you put gear aid tape down and that is gonna like be so much more flush with the fabric of your tent. Um, that's just my suggestion. <laughs> Do you see a person traveling on a smaller dual sport with minimal luggage being able to carry enough effectively to make the recipes you've included in the book? 100%, I, yes, yes. If you wanted to, you could fit all the kit that you need to make the meals that are in the book in, um, what is this? I forgot what size it's. I think this is like a 10 liter dry bag. Maybe 15. It's definitely not a 20. I think this is like a 15 liter dry bag. You could fit everything you need to make the recipes in the book in the 15 liter dry bag, or at least all the kit. Um, the food wouldn't fit in this bag. <laughs> um, like the stuff that you would stop at the grocery store and get. I think you'd need like another five liter dry bag for the groceries. I would be generous and say a 10 liter bag. So as far as like hardware and spices and stuff and your stove, it would all fit in this 15 liter bag because I've done it that like this 15 liter bag represents the bag that all of my hardware fits in when I'm traveling um, and actually it folds down to about there so it's more like this um, and that fits my skillet that fits my pot my kettle my cutting board my my kitchen knives my cups the spatulas the lighter my water filter um, the scrubby, the soap, all of that stuff fits in this 15 liter bag. Um, and then I carry like a grocery bag, um, that I can cinch the top on. So if I go to the grocery store, I know everything has to fit in that one small grocery bag that's packable. So when it's small, like when it's packed up, it's like maybe the size of a tennis ball when it's all packed up. Um, and that's like probably represents another 15 liter bag, but I go overboard with groceries. You don't have to do that. Um, you could definitely fit, like if you, before you go to camp and you stop at the grocery store, you could probably fit your groceries in like a five or 10 liter dry bag um, and put that in your duffel bag and go to camp and make dinner. So all told, probably 20 liters, which is accurate because the small zipper bags that I had in 2022, when Gary and I did the trip around Montana, all of my kitchen stuff fit in that 20 liter zipper top bag. My whole kitchen kit, including groceries and including like my little bit of pantry stuff that I take, which I go overboard with. So you probably don't need the full 20 liters, but yeah. <laughs> um, so was, uh, I uh, obviously I don't know what your definition of like minimal luggage would be but 
as long as you have like 20 liters for food and your kit, it should be okay. And like worst case, you like have 15 liters for your kitchen stuff. And then you have a different like small dry bag that you only use to carry groceries from the grocery store to camp. And then you can just strap that on the outside of your bags or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that sounds like a great idea. Also keeps the extra protein out of the food. Yes. Um, speaking about the, the, the gazebo tent that I want to take to Alaska with me. I think I saw the type of gazebo you were referring to on uh, Vandermonium's channel. It looks interesting. Um, yeah. Are you doing Alaska on the Africa Twin? I hope so. I don't have an update for you. I'm sorry. You guys will know once I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. That is the hope. I hope very strongly that I get to do Alaska on the Africa Twin. If I don't, if I don't, I will be doing it on the CB. Um, she just needs a little bit of attention first. I slept in a hammock in my semi truck for several several years. That's awesome. How are you adjusting to your new hat? I mean, I've had her for a whole year now. And she's grown on me for sure. I appreciate this hat. Um, it definitely stood up to the test of the elements um, going through New England and the Midwest in late fall, beginning of winter. So that's awesome. She didn't warp the way that a lot of the other like felt hats do. Um, she's a little bit stiffer. So <laughs> um, by felt hats, I mean like the squishable felt hat. So like the hat that I lost two years ago now, that was one of the squishable felt hats. And then the one that I bought to replace it in Tombstone was also a squishable felt hat. It went through a rainstorm in Florida and did not survive the experience. It was so out of shape. I tried to reshape it and then I took it to a hatter. He tried to reshape it, but he sprayed it with stiffener and burnt the inside of the headband and then it shrunk. And so I couldn't wear it at all. <laughs> Anyway, this hat is from the Portland Outdoor Store. It's a Stetson, but it's like more of a traditional Stetson where like the wool has been stiffened um, so that if it does get out of shape, I can take it back to the Portland Outdoor Store and they will reshape it for me and clean it, which is very kind of them. I don't think that they knew what they were agreeing to when they gave me that perk. I was like, are you sure? Because this is going to go on the back of my motorcycle and it's probably going to get really messed up. And he's like, oh yeah, just bring it back and I'll reshape it. I was like, okay, I will let you, we, are, we just, we just crossed $9,500. What? <laughs> this day feels really surreal, you guys. I, wow. Uh, this is crazy. <sighs> Oh my God. Yeah. Jason Go says, congrats on the book. Can I try your recipes on my other channel, um, Tara Smith's Chicken and or this one? Absolutely. You can absolutely try the recipes on your channel. Like I, I would encourage that actually. That would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, just as long as you're not like literally f paging through the whole book for the internet, you can absolutely test some of the recipes on your channel. That's, I, that I would love that. Please and thank you. <laughs> I have a sink bucket that has a wire upper border so it has so the water stays in like the those supportless yard pools. Interesting. Bought the early bird PDF. Where is the link to buy you and bro some gas? I'm going to Alaska with my son on a cruise ship. That's awesome, Kevin. <laughs> Hi on Hopium. Yes, for that yes. That's very accurate. Um, thank you, Andy. Yeah, to cre credit me. Please don't take credit for my recipes. I do um, have credits in the book to other people who inspired the recipes that are in the book. Um, but yeah, uh, Kevin, if you, um, well, you, you've already bought stuff on the Indiegogo campaign, but when you go to the Indiegogo campaign and you put, hit the C button, C options button at the top, um, the first thing that should come up says make a contribution and that's pretty much the same thing as like buying us a gallon of gas 
Um, and then you, uh, if you just put in a contribution without like buying a perk or something and that will go through. If you don't want to do that, I will dump in another link in a second. Do, 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 do. Um, Indiegogo campaign. And then Da, 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 da. Um, if you don't want to do that, then I'm going to dump my bio site and the link uh, at the top of the bio site. There is a little money sign symbol, and that will take you. Um, ooh, it does not take you. I'm glad that I tested this before I dumped it in the chat. Down at the bottom. There is a button that says buy me a tank of gas. That's that's the button. That is the button. There we go. So either way, whatever works, no pressure. I appreciate you guys just for your support and showing up and being amazing. Um, I think we're gonna wrap this up because now it's been an hour and a half and I still need to eat food and I don't want to eat food in front of you because I feel like it's gonna be rude um, because I feel like I should be answering questions. Um. <laughs> Excellent, fantastic. Plus I feel like you probably can hear me chewing and I know there's like people who have like that, I can't remember what the phobia is, but they don't enjoy hearing people chew and I don't want to do that to anybody. <laughs> okay, I think we're gonna wrap up the stream now. Thank you all so, so, so much for being here. I can't believe that just in the span of this stream, we have now hit $9,500 on the Indiegogo campaign, which is still insane to me. Like, honestly, did not think, I thought that it was gonna take all month for us to hit the five grand. So for the fact that this is the first day that the campaign has been live and we're like already like at $9,500, I can't, <laughs> I can't believe this. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, yeah. This is crazy. I, I, yep, I'm out, I'm out of words, so I suppose that that means that this is the end. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out with me and making food with me and sitting through uh, tent <laughs> lectures. Uh, I appreciate you all so much and thank you everybody who sent super chats and thank you everybody who has backed the Indigo campaign so far. Uh, if you cannot contribute monetarily, that is totally okay. If you can, please share the Indigo campaign with your friends and family. Um, that would be incredible and do so, so much um, to getting the campaign in front of more eyeballs. So I can't believe I'm going to say this out loud, but so maybe we can hit the 25k stretch goal and Gary and I will be fully funded to go to Alaska in 2025. That feels insane. Um, the, <laughs> okay. I, okay. <laughs> Thank you guys. Definitely 10k by this evening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. You guys are gonna make me cry. I can't, oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Okay, officially, I'm sending you all digital hugs. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And I'll talk to you later.